It's a miracle. So someone wrote in, they asked me a very good question. Starbarks for you asked, if you're able to, could you please do a video on ways to make non-granulating paints appear granulating? That is a feat, let me tell you. And that was seconded by Art and Diamonds with Eskies. They also believed. People who like dogs enjoy granulating paints. That's just how it is. That's a fact. I love granulating paints and I have a dog. So that's just how it works. If I can pull this off, I am the Houdini of the art world. I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's see if I can do this thing. And don't worry, after I explain it all and I show you the example, I'll do a painting with one of the methods that I'm gonna try and I'll see if it works in a regular painting. All right, I don't wanna waste any of your time. Let's get right into it. All right, so like I said, we're gonna start with the three ways that I think you can make non-granulating watercolor look like it's actually granulating watercolor. Let's give it a shot. So the first thing you wanna do is start with a very, very rough paper. Now, Arch's watercolor paper is rough to begin with, but the rough is the roughest of the rough that I've ever seen. Okay, so I'm gonna take Thalo Blue, which is I know 100% is a non-granulating color. I'm gonna start with a very thick pigment load and kind of add a little bit more water as I thin it out through here. Okay, now this is a very non-granulating color, but sometimes because of the texture of the page, some of the pigment will, even though it's very finely ground, very transparent, it is very non-granulating, sometimes you can see some of those, uh, that little bit of color that's sitting on top and then you see where the color kind of sinks into the little nooks of the page and it almost looks like maybe it could be granulating a little bit through the lighter area here like this area right over here so it, you can sometimes you can see that not all the time as it dries you'll see it come out more and more i did a sap green over here and same thing you can see a little bit where the there's some pigment sitting on top of the hills and some pigment that has sunk down and gone to the valley but you you can see a little bit of separation it's not a lot i'm not saying this is oh that's what a granulating paint looks like no but you can make it a little bit textured you can make it look slightly granulating that's one way i'm going to show you another way okay first i'm going to start on this little swatch here this was some thalo blue and i have here there if i can see if you can see it it's a thalo blue Faber-Castell colored pencil and because there's a lot of texture on this page you can just go over this lightly and create a little bit of a granulation or effect it's not going to be actual granulation it's just a granulating effect you see how that comes out there you kind of get that little bit of an effect by doing so if you have a non-granulating paint and the only reason that I would say to do this is if you're looking, you have the color, you want it to be granulating. It's not granulating, but you want to just add a little bit of texture to it. This is a good way to do it. You can just add a little bit of colored pencil on top. Now, you want to make sure that you're adding the colored pencil on top and not on the bottom because it's the water soluble medium on the bottom. Then you put the wax or oil based on top. But you just go over it a little bit and you have some kind of a granulation effect on your transparent watercolor, your non-granulating transparent watercolor, and there it is. Now what if you had a color that you wanted to make look like a separating color? Same thing, you would do apply it the same way. You're, so now I'm going on top of a green and I'm just kind of making it look like there's a blue separation inside the pigment. Again, very rough paper to do this and I'm going over it very lightly. The angle on this thing is like, the angle on this is like this. I'm not putting that much of, a, of an angle. I'm not holding the pen pencil up like this and digging into it. Just like this so it just grazes along the surface. And that's how I'm doing that like this, so. So now you have some granulating separation or what appears to be on a green color that has no granulation. You can take it a step further and have other colors that kind of separate out in there and just do that. I'm going to do the same thing. It's the same thing I was doing on the other one. 
but now I'm adding a darker red to this color and it looks like it's separating out in a darker red so you can do a lot of different things here with the colored pencils and have some fun with them that's for sure and this is the second way I would say that you could add a little bit more texture or it's not real granulation but it's fake granulation to your paint okay this is the final way I'm gonna show you so this is a Winsor Newton granulation medium now this is supposed to add granulation to your paint but you don't actually well I don't know what other people do I've never used this before but I'm gonna experiment with it right here from what I understand you use this as your water for your watercolor so I'm not gonna use a water brush because I don't want to dip this into the the paint well if I dip this into the well then that's going to dry in here when it dries and I'm gonna have that granulation medium in that paint maybe you can make it that way permanently I have no idea I've never tried that before I don't plan on trying that right now but what I'm gonna do is use this the way it was intended to be used and see if I can get a non granulating pigment to look granulating it actually says that it increases the granulation of your watercolor so if it's a non granulating watercolor will it even work I have no idea I'm gonna just pour a little bit into here that should be good it looks like there's granulating rust stains on the inside of this aluminum cap okay now what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna use this the wet paint from the tube this is a thalo blue green shade just like I was doing before I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint here like that I probably shouldn't do it on the paper I should probably do it let me do this on a all right so instead I'm going to do this in here I'm just gonna put a little dot of paint here I'll try it on the paper as well it's not a big deal you don't need much because I'm just showing you how to do it all right now I'm going to dip into this medium whatever it is this granulation medium and I'm going to use this as the water for this paint so I'm not using anything I'm gonna mix it up a little bit because it's been sitting for a couple seconds and I'm going to use this as the water for the paint I don't know if this is how this is supposed to work we're gonna find out here so I'm gonna just paint this out a little bit and dip back in here and paint it out some more let's see if we can get some granulation in a non granulating paint I believe that's actually working that's that's wonderful that's amazing I'm glad it worked out because I didn't want to have to re-record this episode so I'm glad everything is happening the way it's supposed to Boy, this is this is pretty interesting it's it's very interesting to see a thalo blue that could potentially granulate a little bit which is wonderful I'm gonna just put some stuff on this blob of paint here and this is going to be very very dark and very rich and we'll see if we can get some granulation here out into the page move this back a little bit let's see if that granulates the way that I would love it to granulate that would be wonderful if this granulates and oh boy I just open up a whole new world of things I could do with my non granulating paints that I want to do and I think that's why people asked about it I think they were like oh well you know I would like to have a granulating paint for something that I don't have so let's see so let's let this dry for a second and we'll come back and see what it looks like Because usually as it dries you can see the granulation much better while I'm at it I'm also gonna go over one of these spots here that were non granulating and see if I reactivate them with this granulating medium can I get some granulation out from it I don't know if that's possible but we can see now this is a very staining pigment this is the thalo blue so it's going to stain this I'm not going to get this up I'm just trying to see if I can create some granulation off of it let's see if that happens okay so let's look at the result this isn't a hundred percent dry yet there's some things up here that are a little wet but those are the heavier spots you're not going to see it in there anyway so do I see some granulation inside the paint here yeah I definitely do down here probably the most down here because that had the most of that liquid in it it's not it's not water it's the medium but you can still see it up in here pretty good but if I'm looking at this and then I'm looking at this it's very similar this one over here yeah it's very similar so 
you can save yourself a bunch of money and stop having like don't worry about using the tube paints don't worry about dipping into your your well with your this stuff here and having it dry inside your paint or anything like that you can still keep everything pure there is a lot of granulation in here this is a pigment that does not granulate at all but I think it's very similar to doing something like that I think you can get away with just getting a colored pencil either of the same kind or of a different color however you want to do it and have some separation like up here that's fine too but if you wanted to use the same color just find a colored pencil that's very very similar they happen to be this happened to be exactly phthalo blue so it worked out wonderful and do it like this but if you want to get that stuff and have this extreme granulation through here and actually make it a granulating paint you can do that it didn't really do it that you could see a little bit you can see a little bit out in here and and actually through this whole section here you can see a little bit of granulation but it's not tremendous it's not as as granulating as this here this is a lot of granulation in here but it's less predictable so you can see the granulation here it's just that you can't always see it everywhere it's, it's you, sometimes you don't see it at all there's spots up here where there's none and then there's some over here where there's a lot of granulation so uh, however you want to do that or you can be more predictable and you can go to this method here use the colored pencil right on top I hope that helps I hope that answers your question I hope that's something you can actually use and now we'll go on to the next part of the video okay so if I have to say anything here I will say that the using that granulating medium was better than any other method and I really didn't use that much of it I still have plenty in that that container that bottle is still almost full it was just a little drop in there and so you can do but you'd have to do a little bit for each color you're using and just do like all that color everywhere that you're going to use it all at once because you don't want to well I don't want to contaminate my other paints or contaminate even uh, a pan paint with that fluid unless I was going to put some of the the uh, fluid directly into the paint when I poured it into the pan mix it up and just see if that works I don't know if that just turns it into a granulating paint all of a sudden uh, it could I'm not really a hundred percent sure I have no idea how that works but I guess it could and you just have to do that but what I did on this one this whole thing here is an experiment this entire painting here it was it was I listen I love Raptors and I know that vultures get a lot of hate and so I don't I love vultures I think that they're beautiful creatures and I decided to incorporate some kind of vulture into an abstract painting and that's what I did and that one point I was going through this saying I probably am just going to throw this away. I think it looks like garbage. I think I need to get rid of this and, and start over and do something else. But I have this thing where no matter how bad I think it is, I finish it through till the end and then I'll throw it away if I don't like it. But I will always finish it till the end because it always every drawing that I have ever done has a point where I just think it's hideous and I just want to give up on it. I just don't do it anymore. I used to. I used to throw away the, the drawings. I would start doing something and say, oh, I don't really like this. Start crumpled up, throw away. It's not really doing what I want it to do, whatever. Here, I didn't do that. I just followed it through to the end, and I ended up, I thought it was okay. I'm not really sure entirely how I feel about it, but in the end, I think it, it ended up okay. I think it went well. So I ended up keeping it and putting it in the video just like this, and, um, now I use the colored pencil method for doing some granulation on there and at the end of the video Watch all the way till the end I will show you a close-up of where I put that colored pencil to, to make it look like it was granulating a little bit But you let me know out of the three ways that I showed you what was your favorite way if you were gonna do this What would be your favorite way? I would say if I was really dedicated to that one color and just wanted to do it that way, I'd probably use the granulating medium. But if I was just looking at a whole painting, like doing something like this, the colored pencil way was much better for me. It's just much easier. You put it exactly where you want it. You can put as much or as little as you want. And this paper isn't very, uh, very 
textured. It's cold press. This is just not very textured. This is the B watercolor paper, um, one of the hundred percent cotton one. So the B Creative watercolor paper journal, and the paper is not very textured. It's cold press, but not very cold press. It's more. I know it's a watercolor paper, but for me, it's more of a of a in between between hot press and cold press. There's some texture, but not a lot. But anyway. Doesn't matter. Now, something else I do in this video that I wanted to just point out. I do some, like, placeholding colors. I always do that when I draw something that's kind of realistic. Not that this ends up being realistic at all. But in the beginning, I wanted to make sure I got something somewhat realistic of that vulture head. And so I went ahead and I put in, like, placeholder colors. Colors that are not going to be shown in the end when I finish just to get the basic shapes and I do a very light wash to make sure I'm putting everything where I want to put it and sometimes I mix up colors that usually I don't don't go together or that are not going to even be in the end but I just do that I put a little bit of weird false colors in there and then and later as I'm like okay yeah I do like this then I go in with something darker I go over the top of it and I cover it up I think one of the most notable times I did it is I dipped into that olive green and then I went into the Pimentite Genuine and just kind of mixed those together to get like a weird light yellowy. It was a weird green. It was a weird color. And I put that around in the eye. You'll see when I do that. I only put a little bit around just to get kind of figure out where my shapes are going to be. I separated where I wanted the blue to be. And, the, and then the later I put in a little bit of blue and a little bit of the Payne's Gray. And so it just... I, I don't know why I do that, but I've always done that. I've always just, it doesn't matter to me. I just pick a very light color, then I put it there. And for now, that's where that place is. And it just helps me set the form. But if you do that, let me know. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do that. And I don't, I know that I'm not unique, that I'm the only person who's ever done that. But I haven't seen too many other people do that. I, I do that quite a bit. I put down, but only when I'm doing something a little realistic. If it's more abstract in total, then I just, whatever color I put down is the color I put down. So this is something different. I wanted to put this vulture head inside this drawing a little bit and then do something strange around it to kind of warp it around. I have one area where I put a lot of tension in because kind of like because I that's what I like to do I like to have a little bit of tension in the piece that I'm making so what I did was if you look at in the end you'll see when this weave goes around it I put a bigger weave on the bottom than on the top so the top of the beak is kind of sticking almost outside of the weave almost it's like it, it goes behind it it so, but and I, to make it more balanced, what I should have done is put a little bit more on top of that beak and put a little bit more contrast and black around it so that way it was more balanced. But I didn't do that because I like to do that. I like to create that little bit of, oh, that should have been done, but it wasn't. I like to do that in my, my paintings and my drawings. I like people to feel that way. I don't know why. It's just, I, I don't, I, that's what I like to do. And I was even thinking about, oh, maybe I should just go back later and put it in. So I, I'm waiting for a comment about how unbalanced that part is. But that's okay. I didn't mind it. I had fun with it. So I just left it exactly how it was. I said, no, this is how I like to do it. And that's what I did. So, and if for any reason you don't like how this turned out and you don't like any of the methods that I did then you blame these people popping up on the screen here. They're the ones who funded this. And you let them know that they're squandering their money on mediocre talent at best. And that's just how it is. Can we just take a minute here and just look at how beautiful this creature is? How majestic... I, I am not keeping up with it very well. It's much quicker than... I'll catch up with it here in a second. But just watch how beautiful this is. And it's just... it's. You got to turn around, lady. The, the show's behind you. Get get that look off your face. I don't know what you're looking at. The it's you're gonna miss it. Turn around. You're gonna miss the whole thing. You're you're. It's already. It's done. It's oh. Uh, you missed the whole show, and now you're turning around. Just go home. You you missed the whole thing. The show is over. They've already collected the admission. You just go home. But I'm gonna try and. Um, not doing very good camera work here. This is, I shot a movie is what I did here. This is, this is good camera work. 
You'd hire me for your movie. That's just, uh, but look at that beautiful creature and just, I, I love them. I think they're so majestic. I think they're so one. I thought I told you to go home. Anyway, so thumb up the video if you are going to try one of these methods. Maybe I answered a question. You're like, oh yeah, I do want to try that. And maybe you're going to try it in your next one. And then go to the website and say, hey, guess what, Pete? I want to send you this and show you that I did this. And I would love to see what you did if you decided to turn one of your non-granulating paints into a granulating paint. Now, one of the things that I really did screw up here is that the paint that I put the extra granulation in was already a granulating paint. But you don't worry about that. I still added quite a bit and you get to see that at the end. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.